Hi kids, I'm back and uh, just walking you through Stu Stu Studio. Quite technical in this segment of the podcast, but uh, for those of you who care, I'll talk your ear off about gear. Anyway, uh, looking down here, we have uh, Delay and Reverb World. Got my Roland Chorus Echo, which is one of my favorite tape delays. This this Ibanez analog delay unit, uh, which my friends in the band Air, uh, they turned me on to this. This is the uh, model they used for a lot of their uh, first album, Moon Safari, uh, and I love it to death. And it sounds very different. I mean, they all, you know, you, you may look at this room and say it's overkill. I mean, there's more in my garage uh, that didn't even make it into the room. But each of these things have their own character, their own kind of flair. And depending on the song and the idea I'm working on, I'll use whichever one I feel is appropriate. I have two uh, stereo master room spring verb un reverb units. Uh, use these all the time on everything. I almost never use any kind of digital reverbs or computer reverbs. Uh, I just pump everything through spring reverbs. Really, really pref prefer that kind of 60s, 70s uh, tone. And there's that weird kind of space age. Uh, cheese ball element that I feel really works for my music. Over here in this corner we have one of the early uh, Moog Voyagers that the modern Moog company put out. Very very proud of this keyboard. I use it all the time. It sounds fantastic. It was modeled of course after the mini Moog that, that put the Moog company on the map that Bob is so famous for, but it's kind of the modern version with all the bells and whistles that you wish the Mini Moog had. Uh, I don't think they sound anything alike. I don't use this keyboard to substitute for the Mini Moog synthesizer. I have a wonderful Mini Moog synthesizer out in the garage that I bring in here when I need it. It played a lot of the bass tones. In fact, it plays the bass tone on Creeple People. I ran it through an overdrive, and as far as I'm concerned, it sounds like Jack Bruce's Gibson SG bass. Um, very proud of the tone I got on that. But that's my vintage mini mode. Uh, again, both the guys in air and myself, incredible fondness for the uh, Korg MS-20. One of the best pieces of gear I think they ever made. This thing sounds fantastic, not like any other synth. And it's got those patch points on it so you can customize. That's one of my favorite pieces in here. Uh, Tony Banks from Genesis made... Profit 10, very popular. Uh, you basically had to sell your house to afford one back in the day. Found a guy in Fresno who was letting this one go for a very affordable rate and uh, drove all the way up there and got it for a very reasonable price. Another must have polyphonic synth from back in the day. I know half of it is buried. That's one of my favorite keyboards. The only guy that really used this and captured it on record was Chick Corea. This is a Yamaha YC45 organ. It was the top of the line combo organ. Uh, many companies like Farfisa and Vox stopped making combo organs in the early 70s and for some reason Yamaha kept making them. And they got better and better and better at making them. And at one point they decided why don't we fuse a synthesizer with a 60s combo organ. Well the result is a completely unique sound. Uh, I love it to death. It's got some really cool synthesizer features that aren't quite synthesizer. It, it's really hard to describe. But this was the King Daddy at the time. It came out in the early 70s, 73, 74. It's all over the Return to Forever records by Chick Corea.